Do you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency? Join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. Very good question, Rich. And, and yes, there are. Um, they're not set plans yet, but certainly we'd like to be potentially on the big board in Canada uh, by the end of the year. And that we would look at a NASDAQ listing probably within two to three years. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Symmetrics Corporation, Jeff Kendricks. How are you doing today, Jeff? Doing very well, Rich, and thank you for having me on here today. Hey, it's my pleasure. Very excited to have you on the show. Just wanted to get started, and maybe you can tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Symmetrics Corporation. Well, it's a little bit of an interesting story, and it kind of um, gives you an indication of the questions you're going to ask further on. So I'll go over in a little bit of detail. So I'm a CACPA, so that's my background, but I've always been in the construction industry. And um, I was actually working um, uh, to become a carpenter one time before I went back to school. So always, again, uh, love the construction industry. And um, prior to starting this company, I was working as a CFO for a construction company in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And um, uh, some of the guys I played hockey with uh, approached me to uh, come and, and uh, run their two startup companies. Uh, they were to raise the money and I was to run the companies. They didn't raise any money. I lost a quarter million dollars. So did the engineer partner that uh, I met um, as part of that business. Uh, so I said to him, I said, listen, we either go out and get a real job or let's see if we can make the cellular concrete uh, business work. At that time, I had 15,000 left in an RSP. And my partner borrowed 15,000 off his mom and that's how we started the journey. Wow. And so we've had to raise money for everything we've done. And we survived a lot of career or company ending situations. So. Uh, so that's what, what brought us here today to see, to see you. Wow. One thing I always say is whatever doesn't kill you will make you stronger. And one of the reasons that we got so impressed with your company was one of our shareholders brought this pick to our community. And we immediately started doing the, de the due diligence and the, and the research and the digging. And we loved what we saw. Now, one of the things that we noticed was that Symmetrics Corporation has been announcing some big contracts with all the different upgrades going on in the infrastructure construction space, especially with Joe Biden announcing that he intends to spend $1.9 trillion on U.S. infrastructure replacement. Can you go through some of these contracts and what it means for the company? Definitely. So over the past, over 2020, we landed uh, two of the largest projects ever led in this space. The first wow. was in February of 2020, and that was a uh, $16 million Canadian or $12.3 million U.S., project uh, involved in the backfill of bridge abutments. And then the second project in December of 2020 was twice that size almost at 23 and a half million US or $30 million Canadian. Now the first project will start sometime this year in 2021. And the second won't start in a couple of years. But what it does do is it, it, it confirms what we've been telling investors since the beginning, Rich, and that is that this is a huge growth market and um, it, it's still early stage. In fact, we are still considered early stage in the US where it's about 10 years ahead of the Canadian market. Wow, that's extremely impressive. Congratulations on all your success. Well, thank you, thank you. It's been a great, great year, even though we've had to face, of course, the COVID situation like everyone else. Now, what makes Symmetrics stand out amongst its competitors in the infrastructure space? Well, besides our unique product, um, it's really our team, um, uh, the various technologies that we have, uh, our commitment to quality and excellence, and we provide construction industry with solutions to common construction problems where they've been using um, legacy products that really didn't fit the situation. Of note, we don't replace regular concrete. Everybody thinks that we replace regular concrete, but we don't. We replace things like EPS block or um, four by eight sheets of rigid insulation, uh, other um, uh, lightweight aggregates, expensive steel and concrete pile construction, or we'll provide a floating base over weak and unstable soil. So there's tremendous number of applications. Now, uh, plus it's, what's interesting about it is it's environmentally friendly uh, compared to the legacy products that we replace, and it's faster to replace. So significantly reduced construction times. 
So besides this, other benefits include that, of course, as mentioned, environmentally friendly, it's landfill friendly if you have to have, ever have to um, uh, remove it. It's self-leveling, um, insulating, highly frost resistance, it's impermeable, and there's numerous other applications. And usually when you have a product that's better than everything else, it costs more. But in our case, in almost every situation, the installed cost is lower than the alternative. Now in a few quick examples, small project we completed in Edmonton, a tunnel project. Original specification was a traditional um, growth that was gonna take two months to place at a high material cost. Using our material, we completed the project in two days at a wow. lower material cost. And the reason we're able to do that, Rich, is that the air bubbles in our material act like frictionless ball bearings. So we can pump them long distances from one location under low pressure. So again, two days versus two months. At the Shell Scofford expansion a few years back um, for KBR, a large EPC firm, in two weeks, we saved them 5,000 man hours and seven weeks of construction. That's Huge impressive. time savings, huge cost savings. In Absolutely. that case, we were replacing four by eight sheets of rigid insulation. Okay. Wow, that's game changing imagine, technology. Yeah, it's incredible technology. You can imagine um, Union Style trying to cut styrofoam or rigid insulation, I should say, around you know, pipes and piles and wires and cables under these facilities. It takes forever where our material flows like water and we can pump to, up to 250 cubic meters an hour with some of our larger equipment. Wow, that's impressive. You guys are definitely on the track of being disruptive and we love disruptive technologies. We love disruptive companies. We love game changing technology. And clearly you guys are on the verge of doing something revolutionary you're already doing it and only getting bigger and getting better based on what I'm seeing. Now, I've been looking at some of the financials that you guys announced. You recently announced fourth quarter and annual results going through all the accomplishments of the company. Can you break these results down for us a little bit and let the viewers know the biggest highlights? Yeah, just to break them down. And, and if you back out all of the IRS, which are non-cash or non-business related adjustments, we actually grew our sales in the COVID uh, situation, which was good, um, uh, great in fact. Um, we also improved our cash flow over the previous year, even though we, again, we went through the COVID situation. We, had gen we generated a slightly larger operating loss but that, uh, than the previous year, but that was due to us uh, making the social decision and the right move to really retain our, our highly trained staff during the COVID situation using the Canadian subsidy. So this is more a, a Canadian situation where we went sort of backwards in sales because of the COVID situation. But um, we believed it was better to retain our staff moving forward rather than end up uh, possibly losing them by laying them off. And it was the right decision, not only but the company, but for our future and our shareholders as well. So some of the, the highlights other than that is that of course, Main thing is all of our staff stayed healthy, or if they did get affected by COVID, they recovered. And, uh, and, and this was important because we were treated as an essential business and essentially doing projects all over North America. In fact, during the, the worst situation in New York and LA, we were pouring projects there. So, wow. um, so our employees were at risk and are still at risk. But fortunately, uh, we've all been smart, we've stayed safe and we've stayed healthy. And that's the most important um, um, highlight of the year. Others include, of course, we completed two heavily oversubscribed financings, one at the first of the uh, COVID in April of 2020, where we raised five and a half million dollars. And recently, uh, just in March of this year, we raised 23 million. Uh, we originally only, only raised five to 10. It was heavily oversubscribed. In fact, we've heard over a hundred million. And so, um, wow. so that, that we've got a very strong balance sheet right now in order to implement our strategic plan. And so we're, uh, we've been able to pay off some of our high interest debt and we've got a strong cash position going forward. Uh, we also, again, were awarded those two large infrastructure projects, but since year end, we've also announced the awarding of another $15 million in projects, right? So it continues to grow uh, even in the face of this COVID situation. In fact, our current backlog at March 31, 2021 now stands at $94.4 million. That's impressive. That's what I was in that that's what got my attention. I'm like, not only are they making money and 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 have money in the bank and generating lots of revenue and consistently building, 
you got almost a hundred million dollars in business just ready to go. So that is impressive. And that's, you know, that, that talks about your team, right? So let's get into your team a little bit. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about the Symmetrics team and what each person brings to the table? A, a great, a great team, as you mentioned, a great group of directors to start with. Uh, we just added a new director this morning. We sent out a news release, having a great uh, individual, a young lady with uh, great construction experience. Uh, we got great management team with significant years of experience, not only in cellular concrete, but also construction. Uh, we just added a new CFO in um, December, Randy Boomhauer. He's a seasonal entrepreneurial CFO with strong public, private, and construction related experience. Uh, Jordan Weiner is the president of our Chicago based mix on site business that we acquired in uh, May of 2018. They were one of the four leading suppliers of cellular concrete in the US. Wow. Um, then Pat Stevens. Um, he has over 40 years experience in the cellular concrete industry. He is one of the founders of cellular concrete in the US and in North America, and in particular, the heavy tunnel grouting industry that I mentioned earlier with that one project or sample project that I talked about. He currently is the president of Pacific International Grout, the company we acquired as of um, October of 2019. And um, it was one of the three remaining large suppliers. So there's only two other large suppliers out in the marketplace today. And again, a great number of other great leaders and um, was significant, not only say the concrete, but construction experience all the way through our businesses. That's very impressive, very impressive team. And you guys are a very impressive company. I love to identify companies that are undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed, and you're trading at around 50 cents in Canada and you've got all this business. And I see companies trading at a dollar, two dollars, three dollars that aren't even doing a million a month. So in my opinion, this is a company that, in, in my opinion, based on the structure and based on your revenue and your growth and the business coming, I think this looks very undervalued, very underappreciated, very underexposed in, in my opinion. Now, one of the reasons why we like the company as well, and you mentioned on it, is that you've got money in the bank. Can you talk a little bit about the money in the bank and if you plan to raise any capital in the future? And if so, what that funds and what those funds would be used for? Yeah, well, good question, Rich. And we have over $20 million in the bank and this is even after paying off some high interest debt. So we've really put our balance sheet in a very strong position. We'll also be generating increased cash flow here from operations on organic growth. Um, we'll also see the continued exercise of warrants, um, which we saw, you know, not only late last year, but also early in this year, there's been a significant number of the warrants that we've had outstanding exercise. So it's added to our cash bank. Um, we're not planning on raising any additional capital in the short term. However, if we um, identify an acquisition target that may require the raising of additional capital, uh, we may do so. It doesn't appear that that would be the case, but it could happen. Hey, Jeff. So one of the questions I have and our community has is, is the company planning to uplist to, let's say, the TSX, the senior exchange in Canada, or the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange in America? Are there any goals to uplist in the future? Very good question, Rich. And, and yes, there are. Um, they're not set plans yet, but certainly we'd like to be potentially on the big board in Canada uh, by the end of the year. And that we would look at a NASDAQ listing probably within two to three years. About uh, 85 to 90 percent of our sales come from the U.S. Our acquisitions will be in the U.S. So really, we are, although Canadian uh, based, we're going to be a U.S. mainly company in the very near future. Fantastic. Now, can and we love here at Rich TV Live tight share structures. Tight share structures is like the key to our success, and I always try to educate our community that. Tight float stocks, responsible companies with tight share structures is the key to seeing stocks go in the right direction. Because if companies have irresponsible share structures and they're highly dilutive, typically they're going to go in the wrong direction. There's going to be a lot of selling pressure. Can you give us a little bit of a breakdown on your share structure and how much is held by insiders and what Symmetrics is doing to draw the interest of more institutional investors? Okay, so... Um... 
A good question, of course. And uh, it's the same, we're of the same belief. Our management is the same belief. In fact, we had not raised a dollar, even through some very difficult times on the equity markets, until we actually did the acquisition of Mixon Site in May of 2018. So almost 15 years with, or 10 to 15 years without raising capital, we wow. got by with what we had. And, uh, and it's a testament to not only to myself, but our team and our directors as well. Right now, we do have more shares outstanding. There's 112.3 million shares outstanding as of December 31st. Fully diluted, that's 175.6 million. In that dilution, there's $13.3 million of a convertible debenture that actually matures May 31st of this year. And it's significantly in the money. That was related to the mix and site acquisition. So we actually bought it with paper and debt. Um, we also have 36 million warrants outstanding uh, as of December 31. Of course, some of them have been, been exercised since, and that would bring in an additional $23 million in capital into the company. So wow. again, as mentioned before, prior to this, we don't plan on raising any capital unless it's absolutely necessary because we believe as you do, is to keep the, the share structure as nimble as possible going forward for the benefit of our shareholders that have been with us since the beginning and that have just come on board as well. Now, I will say that insiders own less than 10%, and that's a testament of how we started the company. Remember, uh, we started it with $30,000 and they had to raise money um, to build this company ever since. But within that group is a strong group of friends that were in here from the beginning. So we actually own a very strong block of shares that, that manages this company going forward. Now, do you have any plans to attract institutional investors? Well, you know, um, we actually attracted a couple of institutions at the financing in April of 2020. So a couple right. of institutions. We have four or five new ones as part of this latest financing. And my understanding is, too, as well, is that as the uh, market weakened over the past, past few weeks after our last financing, uh, not only in the institutions that were part of our group, but also some new ones picked up some uh, of the shares that were available over the past month after the, uh, the sort of the market went soft in the, uh, in the micro cap area. So all good news for Symmetrix that's helped establishing a very strong base for our future. Now Symmetrix, what is the main goal for 2021 that you want shareholders to know today before we leave this interview? Well, there's a few goals. And of course, the first is a gross shareholder value. So how are we going to do that, right? So first is continued organic growth. We expect, regardless of what happens, strong organic growth in this marketplace because it's really early stage. In fact, in Canada, it's about 10 years behind the U.S. market. Wow. Okay, so again, we expect a return to profitability this year as well. Great. Okay? We also um, we're going to move forward with regional expansion, uh, particularly in the U.S., where the market is growing dramatically. I mean, we're currently located in Chicago and in Bellingham, Washington, and we drive to projects in Texas. So uh, it's not cost effective to continue not to be there. So eventually we'll be setting up in those regions. And then we're going to potentially identify and complete one or two acquisitions before the end of the year. We hope to. Um, um, we're looking at acquisitions not only in our space, but maybe some vertical integration as well as well as looking to some companies that may in same or similar businesses that have some, could provide some technology or products for our other space in other parts of the country, right? So again, we'll only look at acquisitions if they're gonna add value to our shareholders. That's fantastic, Jeff. Now, there's going to be shareholders from all over the world that are part of our community that are going to see this interview and they're gonna have questions. There's going to be potentially partners and other public companies that will see this interview as well. And they might want to do a joint venture, an LOI to do potential business. What's the best way for them to get in contact with you or the company? Well, the best way to get a hold of us, Rich, is really to go to our website. It's the easiest because on there you'll find my contact information. You'll find the contact information of our um, two IR firms, that being uh, Howard Group, so Jeff Walker in, in Calgary and Glenn Axelrode with Bristol in uh, Toronto. And so they're always available. I'm always available as our CFO, Randy Boomhauer, for, uh, to contact. We especially like to talk to shareholders or people who want to be shareholders. And then it's important to note too as well that um, we do have coverage already and we expect that coverage to continue. 
And that coverage is with um, Claris Securities and, and partners, both out of Toronto. They've been with us a couple of years and uh, those are, uh, reports are available uh, uh, within those two groups. So uh, I encourage uh, potential investors, investors to really look up Claris and M partners and get a hold of those uh, research reports because they're they help explain the business and where we're going as well. Wow, super excited to see you guys grow and evolve. And thank you so much for joining us today, Jeff Kendrick, the CEO of Symmetrix Corporation. Thank you very much, Rich. Keep well and safe and look forward to talking to you again. My pleasure. Now, before everybody leaves, I just want to remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for education and information purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we cover here on Rich TV Live. Invest in the best. The best is blessed. I do believe that this is a company that has a great future. If you like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners, and we bring them to you first. Thank you. For